Okay guys, in this video, we're going to be having a look at how we can construct the ring component of this sub-assembly. So we'll focus on this part and we'll show you step-by-step step how to model and create this. Let's head on over and start a new part file. Okay, so before we actually go into Creos, it's useful to uh, have a quick review of the engineering drawing that's been provided. So this is our ring component and I think you can break this down into three major shapes you know that make up this component so i'm just going to try and highlight those to show you so the first thing that should be fairly obvious to everyone is that we've got this kind of outer ring section just here okay and we know the diameter of that is it's 13 millimeters so so we can we can do that fairly easily i, I know it's got a hole through it but i'll ignore that to start with okay so so i've got a cylinder that I need to draw is 13 millimeter diameter. Where's the height coming from? So the height's coming from over here. So we've got 11 millimeters for the height. That's a fairly simple primitive shape to start with. Um, if we if we come to the side view here, what we can see is there are two major sections, two different shapes. Let's let's highlight them in different colors. So I think there's this section here. You can see. So we've got this kind of uh, semicircle backwards D shape that we can make, uh, and, and that's fairly straightforward as well. You know, it's it's five millimeters in diameter, and we know that from the center line here, we've got eight millimeters for the center of the hole. The, the through hole, we we can worry about that at the end, but kind of the primary shape is just basically a circle with, with some extended um, edges that, that, that form with the major body. And, and we can see that the extrusion here is actually going to be 10 as well. So we've got a circle, we've got kind of a D shape, nothing too difficult to model, really. And then this section here, okay, it's, it's got a cutout in the middle of it, but I, I, can, I worry about cutouts at the end. Let's think, let's get the primary shape in. And so if we highlight this shape, that we're trying to achieve. Um, let's change the color here. Uh, yeah, let's go back to green. So that one's changed to blue now, but that's fine. Um, so what we've got here is it, kind of a cone shape, uh, but if you if you ignore the radius on the end here, it's, it's kind of like a, a bit of a triangle. So we're going from the top here. Okay, we've been given the angle and we've given the center point. Okay, so, so, that, so this shape is basically what we're trying to generate here. So we get that shape, and we know that that one also needs to be extruded out 7.5. So there's three primitive shapes that we can use to generate this component. Okay, the edge is rounded off here, so we'll draw a circle, and then we can put a tangent line in there at 40 degrees, and we know that the center point's 11 away there. Um, so with that in mind, let's head on over to Creo and, and have a look at implement. Okay guys, so we need to first load up Creo Parametric. So we're going to to start and scroll down to P, so you should have PTC, Creo Parametric. Okay, um, when we load up Creo, the first thing we should do is set the working directory. So we save all our files to a known location. So let's just put a safe folder in here and click OK. And then we need to click on new to start a new part. So part selected, give it a name, GD03. And untick the default template. Okay, we need to set the units correctly. So click OK. You can see that they're inches at the moment. And we need these to be millimeters part solid, so there we go, apps. So you can see we're now in the environment, just a quick refresh to navigate, hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate the screen around, okay, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. If you want to pan, you can press shift and the middle mouse key, and that will move your screen around like that. If you press control in the middle mouse key, you can move your mouse forwards and backwards, that's another way of zooming. Okay, um, if you need to go back, if you want to change the view style, it's in the display here. I'm going to change it to shading with edges. And you can put default orientations or if you want to go back to your, your default view that you come on with, come into Creo with, just press Control D and that will take you back to your default position. Okay, 
Remember, everything will come in the model tree on the left-hand side of the screen. So if you want to highlight any of the planes, you can click them from here. And you can see we've got a coordinate system in the middle of the screen as well. Okay. We've got contextual menu. So when we change, we need to watch out for the menu changing along the top here. Okay. Right, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do, remember when we're trying to extrude or do an extrusion, we need a sketch. Okay, so we click sketch, click on the plane we'd like to sketch onto, and then we'll go into sketch mode. So we'll get our sketch tools available to us. Um, for my first extrusion, I need to do a circle with a diameter of 13. So I'm just going to use a circle tool. I'm going to click into the middle. I'm going to snap to the references in the middle of the screen and, ex and just Move the mouse, I'm not clicking anything now. Click again, press the middle mouse button. Okay, you can see that, that I can now change the dimension here because it's dimensioned for me. So if I double click, type 13, and that's now the correct diameter. That's all I need for this one. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to click on. So you can see I've got sketch one here. I'm going to click extrude. You can see that's extruding that out for me now into the screen. So the depth for this, a couple of ways to change it. I can move this, it gives me some manual control. Um, you can double click in here, type in a value, or you can come along to the toolbar, the ribbon toolbar along the top. So I need this to be 11, okay? Once I'm happy, I'm gonna click okay. So I've got the basic cylinder shape that's required. Um, now what I'm going to do is move the screen slightly so that I can get one of these planes across. Here, so I'm going to click on that plane. If you click on a plane, you get this nice little dialog box that pops up. If you want to see anything square from that view, you can. So if I click here, it changes it so that I can see it perfectly side on now. And so to make this shape, I need to do a kind of a D section here. So I'm going to, with this plane highlighted, so you can see I've got this plane highlighted, I'm going to go sketch and then sketch view. And uh, now I just need to start drawing the geometry. Um, so I've got a circle. I need to draw a circle around here somewhere. I don't know exactly where it needs to be, but I don't need to worry about that yet because I can dimension it up afterwards. So I'm just going to click and then drag down to this bottom reference line and press the middle mouse button. So you can see I can change the diameter. So I need this to be five. Change that. And then the distance from this center line needs to be eight. Click eight there. All right. Now I need to fill these edges in here. So that's going to be done with the line tool. So I'm going to click on the line tool, click there, and then click to the middle, and then press the middle mouse button. So press down your scroll wheel, and that will end that current line. We need to do the same at the bottom here. So again, click, click again, press the middle mouse button, and then we can join up these lines here as well, and press the middle mouse button. Okay, so when we're extruding, what we need is a shaded area. So it normally shades in pink when it can extrude an area. Uh, at the moment, it's telling me that it can't really figure out what the volume is uh, because I've got this internal line here. So I'm going to use the delete segment tool. So I'm going to click delete segment, click this line, and then press the middle mouse button. Okay, now you can see that I've got this shaded region. So if I rotate the screen, this shaded area is what will be extruded out for us. And from the engineering drawing, I know that this needs to be extruded out 10 millimeters. So I'm, I'm happy with this sketch, so I can click OK. If you take note in the model tree, I've got sketch one, my original circle, my extrusion. And we've got sketch two there now. And what I need to do is do another extrusion. So I've got sketch two highlighted. I'm going to click extrude. And I know that the depth for this needs to be 10. Okay. I've set this to 10, but it doesn't quite look right, okay? So it's extruding it all from one side of the sketch. What I really need is the sketching line to be in the middle. Uh, and luckily, there's a nice way we can change this. So if you see depth at the top in this ribbon, I can change the way in which it extrudes you know, this uh, sketch for me. And a very useful and powerful one is symmetric. So if I click this, what it does is it keeps your sketching plane in the middle and then extrudes out both of those directions. Okay, So you can see we're already starting to get quite close to what this component should look like now. Um, and so I'm just going to click OK. And so we've got that section. Now I've got a slightly more challenging bit. So I've got this uh, triangular section that comes out this, uh, this side here. 
Um, and so, but I'm going to do it in a similar way to what I've just done. So I'm going to click on this plane that goes through the middle, go sketch, and then sketch you again. All right. Again, we can start using a circle. So I'm going to use the circle tool, click it, and drag it down to the bottom. So I'm going to position this, and positioning this is going to help me um, with, with getting everything else correct. So the distance here should be 11, and the diameter needs to be 5. So that's, that's looking good. And what I also need to do now is join this line up here to here. So I've got a difficult bit though now because the line from here to here is specified by an angle, okay? So what I'm actually going to do is draw, I'm gonna click on this reference line and just draw a line away from everything, okay? So I draw a line there and then press the middle mouse click. So I know that that's not correct, It's not, but it's not gonna to be too much of an issue because I'm gonna sort this out using constraints. So we can add constraints to different lines so that they interact with li other lines, okay? Now, this line needs to be tangent to this line. So I'm going to click the tangent tool, click this line, click this circle, and you can see it's given this kind of little symbol here that means those lines are tangent now. And that means that I can now change the angle here and it will maintain the tangency between the line and the curve. Okay, now this angle needs to be 40 degrees. So I did a pretty good job of uh, guessing, you know, how, how this line should be. But um, so that's 40. Okay, then that, so now we've got everything set pretty much how we need it to be. Um, what we're going to do is we're gonna take this here. So I don't want that bit of line there because that will cause me some issues if I try and extrude that. So I'm gonna snap a line from there and go to there, okay. I've not got a shaded area again. That's because I, I need to go and delete some of these lines. So if I click on delete segment, I'm gonna click here, click here, click here. You can see that I've actually managed to remove those and now I've got a nice shaded area. We can, if we want to actually add a hole that goes all the way through here as well. So we can add some holes into sketches. Um, so I'm going to do that for this one. So if I had a hole on the center here, so if I use a circle tool, draw this hole. So what's the diameter of this? It should be 1.5 from the engineering drawing. Okay, so we've got 1.5 through there. And again, we're gonna to have to use an extrusion afterwards. So I'm happy with this, click okay. And then we're going to go extrude. Again, we're only extruding one side, so we're gonna to have to change this. So let's make it so that it goes symmetric again, and this time it's only 7.5, okay. It's looking very good, click okay. And now we can start worrying about some of the other features. So we need, so there's another hole that needs to be added in here and then we've got a hole that goes through here and there's a, there's a bit of cut out in there. Um, I could add the hole back to my original sketch. So if you ever need to go back and make any changes, it's very straightforward. So if I click on sketch two, go edit definition here, we're back in that stage of our design. So this needs a hole that's 1.5. So let's add that in. Just there, circle, 1.5. Click OK, you can see that it just updates it for us. And that's all, all set with the hole there now. Um, I need to do a cut out here. So there's a, set, there's a cut in this component just there. So let's do it from this top face, this plane here. So I'm gonna click this top plane and go sketch and sketch view. And I need to do a cut out. So it's three millimeters from the center of this. So First things first, let's just draw a line just there. So that should be 1.5. We'll, we'll do the same the other side as well. That's gonna be 1.5. Okay, so that's the gap that needs to be cut out. And it, I need it to cut along this circular edge here. So that's quite easy as well. If I use the circle tool, I can just match that circle that's already there 
And then I can use the line tool here. Oops, click the wrong thing. Click along the edge there. So we can pick up on geometry that already exists, and that, that can help us out. And now I need, so I need this area shaded in. So I'm just going to use the delete segment tool. So delete, 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 delete. I don't need those lines. I don't need those. I don't need that. I don't need that either. So when you're using the delete segment tool, if you hold down the mouse button, you draw this line. Wherever this line touches will be deleted. Okay, so you don't have to keep clicking. You just click once, move the cursor to delete those lines. Okay, so I've got that shape on that plane. I'm going to click OK. Then we'll go to extrude. I'm going to pull this all the way through. I've got a problem. Uh, at the moment, it's trying to add this material. Okay, so if we want to use an extrusion to cut material, there's a tool at the top here called Remove Material. So we're just going to click that. You can see now it's removing that from the model for us. So that looks good. Click OK. Now we've got one final hole that needs to be added. There's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, let's use the extrusion method. So I'm going to click on this top surface, click Sketch, Sketch View, and then we're just going to add a circle onto this from the center. So the diameter for this one is 9.5. 9.5, OK. And that should be good to go. OK, so we've got that sketch on the top face. We're going to go extrude. And then we're going to flip the direction. So there's an arrow here. It lets us flip the direction of the sketch. OK, you can see it's automatically detected that we want to remove the material. And we can pull it all the way through here. OK, so there's a couple of ways we can deal with this. We can just explicitly state the depth. So we know that the depth should be 11. OK, and you can see it's going all the way through. However, it's probably better practice to do this. And so if you say through all, OK, that means that it doesn't matter what height I make this cylinder. So if I go back and decide that it needs to be a little bit higher, this hole will always go all the way through the component. OK, so there's a couple of ways we can deal with that. But that's quite an easy way. OK, so now we just need to think about adding the rounds. So from the engineering drawing, we've got a couple of different rounds here. So we've got um, a round here and a round just here that's three millimeters. OK. And then all the other rounds are actually 1.5. So if we go round, change this to 1.5, then we can go. So that's 1.5 just there. And that's 1.5, that's 1.5, so it's that, so it's that, and then these edges just here as well. Okay, now we can click OK, and that should be our completed component. Um, so if you want to change the color, you can go to annotate, no view, sorry, appearance, and then you can change the color so there's some default colors in here but if you want to change it to something else you can click on this and you can have a look at color wheel change it to whatever okay close so i've got that color now and then i can just select all the parts and press the middle mouse button okay so you can change the color to whatever you want if you want to change the view you can get rid of all the planes so you can see how it's looking Right. And then the final check is our volume. So if we go to analysis and we go to measure volume, so we've got 1110.40 and you'll see that that's exactly on the engineering drawing. OK, okay guys, so please make sure that once you've finished your component that you save your part. So saving is fairly straightforward. Just click the save button. It'll open up your your file explorer and you don't need to put a name in it or anything like that you just click OK and then that part file is, has saved okay okay good luck guys